ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. John Belkowitz. I'm the director of R&D, and today we've got... I'm looking at the camera. Yeah, I'm the director of R&D. Well, I was trying to like, you know, swashbuckle my hair there, but I don't have hair, so I gotta do it with my eyes. Um, I really hope you include this, Patchouli. That was fun. So, um, today we're gonna be answering a question. And it's a, a great question that I, I'm excited to go into um, and I, I wanted to preface that this is going to be a to be continued. Despite the fact I have an answer today, I'm currently researching the topic right now. Um, and the question was from Sam Hall. So Sam Hall is a our business development partner at Zypex in Australia, sustainability in concrete structures. And so Sam's question, ding! Um, I wanted to ask you about a crystalline tech versus colloidal silica tech. Do you have any feedback on pros and cons of each other? And what Sam is talking about, you know, the product that he works with, Zypex, it's been used a long time in the industry. Uh, it is a pore blocking technology for waterproofing or water migration mitigation. Um, and I oftentimes speak about colloidal silica hydrogels and how they impact the concrete matrix. Um, so I wanted to get into um, you know, this type of technology based off of Sam's question. So again, the question, ding! I lost it. You it was, said it. It was what was the difference between crystalline pore blocking and, um, and the colloidal silica. He didn't say colloidal silica <clears throat> hydrogel, but the colloidal silica tech. So we could take this a few different ways. The most important way that I want um, to focus on is what I understand about the crystalline uh, structure development. And this is more on a molecular, molecular growth. Um, so as I understand with pore blocking technologies, there are two ways to use it. One is mixing it up into concrete and then there's one way of putting it on after the concrete has hardened. And with a crystalline uh, pore blocking technology, if I define the word crystal, it's a repeating lattice structure to be used as a the thing that grows into our pore structure, whether it's percolation or the connection between pores or individual pores, it grows into that pore structure and it blocks the migration of water. Now, this leads up to the point that if we're going for pore blocking, um, we are filling up our pores and to get to it my only reservation I love the idea of it and there is a place for pore blocking versus the colloidal silica hydrogel technologies um, in the industry and the Zypexes and I believe there's also uh, a few other companies have done a great job over the decades of creating concrete that lasts that's stronger and lasts longer what I would say the biggest difference is is the amount that pore gets filled up. You know, with a, a technology like the, the Zypex, which is pore blocking, or, or a pore blocking technology, um, it's the tortuosity, or the change in the path that the ions, you know, with migration, have to take to get to that point where they're either, either gonna cause a concrete damage or the reinforcing steel. So, a pore blocking technology that grows after the fact that has a crystal structure, I don't know if it will be able to take up as much space um, in the hydrated cement matrix as something like a hydrogel or a colloidal silica. And I, I want to separate it a hydrogel, a colloidal silica, and a colloidal silica hydrogel, three totally different things. A hydrogel can be any type of polymer that just absorbs a certain amount of water. A colloidal silica is a liquid dispersion that can be used in a lot of different ways to increase the growth or the development of calcium silicate hydrates, to increase uh, cement dissolution, densify the mix, and there's a whole bunch of slew of things that go over or go through with that. Uh, colloidal silica, you're going to be able to chop out a lot out of this. A little this. bit. I'm already over fermenting. You're so sweet. A clotosilica hydrogel is a combination of the two, so not only are you getting that swelling 
of the hydrogel, but wherever that colloidal silica comes in contact with the calcium hydroxide, it's going to pozzolanic react and create more of that backbone of concrete strength within that hydrogel and the hydrated cement matrix. And I don't know if the poor blocking technology does the same thing, especially if it if that lattice structure doesn't react with the hydrated cement matrix. Now, if the lattice structure does react with the hydrated cement matrix, so there is a interfacial zone, there's a bonding, oh, I mean, that's just flipping awesome. I mean, uh, but that's why I said it needs to be continued. So, just to wrap it up, I do think poor tech or blocking technologies are great. Uh, I think as um, a crystalline material, there's a question in my mind about how well they change up or lock up that interface between the hydrated cement matrix and the pour and the actual pour blocking technology, and that's what I have to do my homework in. I do know about the colloidal silica hydrogel technology, although I'm putting more research into that, and of course I want to compare the two. So I hope that answered your question. If you have any information, please reach out to me. If anybody has any other questions, don't forget to put them in the section below. Thanks a bunch. Go concrete. Beat. Asphalt.